Probably the most exciting feature you get if you pay for ChatGPT Plus subscription is the code interpreter. This feature is supposed to change the way we use ChatGPT given its superpowers per se, so I've tested it and the conclusions are simple. This feature is a game changer but with a few caveats. So in this video I'll show you my favorite things the code interpreter can do. Now first we have to make sure the code interpreter is enabled. To do this we need to click on these three dots, go to settings, beta features, next up turn on plugins and code interpreter, now close settings, in a new chat you'll see an option to switch from GPT 3.5 to GPT 4. Click on that and in drop down list select code interpreter. If you see this plus sign here then you did everything right. Okay so the first thing that code interpreter has fixed is math. From now on it can do math correctly unlike standard GPT that often gets tangled and misled into obscurity. Just to show you my point, I'll ask it to do some, uh, some division and multiplying to which it gives an outright answer. If we click here, we'll see a Python code it wrote to complete my request. To make things more interesting, I'll ask it to present the calculations as a thought process, which it does, and after that explain the formula it used. This explanation is super basic and will work beautifully for those who don't really get math but want to understand what's happening. Of course, this example is super simple but it proves that math math works now, you can feed it anything from complex equations to arrays and systems of equations, basically it's a glorified calculator now. To me math is important, but definitely not the most interesting feature. Apparently code interpreter can read PDF books, but I wasn't able to make it work. I fed it quite a few books in PDF, but it just refused to properly work. Throughout that trial period I was basically acting like a mommy advising code interpreter what to do, I asked it to use Python, change libraries and so on, but time and time again there was some mistake that just didn't let me do it. Maybe in your case it will work, so here is a quick guide for you. Make sure it uses Python first, then ask to change a text recognition library to PDF minor. Well, that's the furthest I've come reliably. But it was far easier with images, almost no problems. Here, let me show you. I won't kid around and ask code interpreter to really put in the work right away by taking this poster for the iRobot movie and transforming it into a poster something like Obama's hope. I think this should put the capabilities of Code Interpreter to the test. And as you see, ChatGPT has agreed to this job and has already outlined as a plan. It has transformed the image to grayscale and now it's applying the posterization effect. Once that's done, it applies colors and gives out this <laughs> crap. <laughs> Well, no biggie, we can easily fix that. I will just ask it to use the color scheme of the original image to which I get an image that shows the three dominant colors. Apparently ChatGPT used some sort of uh, clustering for that. But what is the final result? Better, but something's a bit off. I don't like this huge blob of black colors and as the testing shows, increasing the number of colors used doesn't help. What helped is asking ChatGPT to outright fix that problem. And now it looks exactly how I I imagined it. As a final adjustment, I will just ask to lower the number of colors to 4 and give me a file as a downloadable PNG. The final, final result looks like this. What is my verdict? Well, it is finally possible to work with images through ChatGPT, but it's still a bit finicky. I still need to further study how these particular prompts should be phrased, but I can see the potential. Now let's take a quick break and talk about this video sponsor, Dectopus AI. Dectopus AI is a real lifesaver when it comes to making presentations. I just put in my topic, what I want to achieve and who I'm talking to and boom, it whips up a fully decked out presentation in no time. It's like having an assistant who knows what you need without having to ask. With just a few clicks, I could modify design structures, colors, and fonts to align with my preference. One cool thing I loved is the magic buttons. It helps you add more points, notes, and even pictures to your slides, making them look super professional. The voice recorder feature is a big win. Being able to record my voice over the slides is a huge help, especially when I want to make my presentations engaging and lively. Dactopus also has a rehearse mode, which is great for practicing before the 
big presentation. There's also an easy way to share your stuff online with a link that you can update anytime. All in all, Dectopus AI has some killer features that make presentation making way easier and way more fun. Check it out by clicking the link in the description. Everything I've shown you was just a warm up because Code Interpreter is something more than just a tool to work with images and text. It is now a full fledged programmer and data analyst. Don't believe me? Well, look at this because if the development continues at this pace, all data analysts will be laid off in a few years. Let's take some uh, publicly available data on the World Heritage locations and feed it into ChatGPT with some admittedly lazy prompt engineering. I will ask it to create a map with all these sites marked on it. After a minute of waiting, the map looks like this full of red dots. This is already fine, but I want more. So I'll ask you to color code the sites and create an HTML web page that I could interact with. This task takes a bit longer to process, but the result is simply amazing. Look at this map. I can zoom in, out, click on these markers and get the name of a location. That's at least $500 worth of code in here that I would have paid if I had chosen a conventional data analyst and programmer for the job. And Code Interpreter did that for 20 bucks a month. Now I can take this file and embed it into my own website, app, or just use it as is. But that's just the beginning because where Code Interpreter really shines is in working with huge data sets. That's why I'm gonna feed it a huge data set of electric vehicles in Washington and ask to give me 10 visual pieces that will explain this data set. Oops, forgot to upload the file. And now ChatGPT gives me a list of graphs charts and so on that it will draw for me. It says the visualization will be done in two batches, five images each. And as the first one rolls out, I can already see that these charts are really thorough and detailed. Doing all this by hand would have taken 10 or even 20 minutes, but ChatGPT did it in less than a minute. The second batch of graphs is a bit crooked in formatting, but we can always ask ChatGPT to give a link for each image to download. Just imagine all those office workers spending hours organizing data sheets, writing formulas, creating filters, and ChatGPT just casually swoops and does a day's work in minutes. Well, actually scary stuff. But data analysts aren't the only ones to lose their jobs, as I already said. Programmers are in danger too. Because Code Interpreter can almost 100% replace a junior programmer right now. But again, with caveats. Here, I will just ask ChatGPT to write a Python code for a program that generates names based on zodiac signs. A dumb request, I know. The code I got isn't really gonna work all that well and ChatGPT made sure to explain why. Apparently we need to install package with name, so don't rush to conclusions just yet, okay? Because I still have a few things to ask. For example, this. To write a code that sums up things. This code is super straightforward. I did that in my first year of uni. But how about something a bit more interesting? Let's test this feature in a different way. We'll play a typical deception game. I will use one chat to generate code with mistakes and the other chat to spot and fix them. I will ask ChatGPT to write me a simple calculator. This code is also quite simple, but we're just getting started. I will ask it to create an HTML site with a calculator. This is already a back end and front end operation. ChatGPT acts like a full stack developer, at least from a technical standpoint. So the result I got is exactly what I expected, an HTML code and a server code. ChatGPT decided to do that through a server, and I know for sure that sometimes establishing the connection between a server and a client can be tricky, and also ChatGPT suggests using Flask, which once again shows how far it has come. Okay, now we have a code to use in our game. That's why I'll ask ChatGPT to plant a few mistakes in the code that only an attentive programmer could notice. After that, I'll go start a new chat and ask it to read this code and fix it, and boom, it gave a list of mistakes and fixed them. Look, these two codes are identical. That's the power of a code interpreter. And it can write comments with explanations, not a big deal. In a few years, ChatGPT is going to write code better than people. So if you are a programmer, you better start studying something a robot can't do. <laughs> like uh, making YouTube videos, for now at least. Well, Code Interpreter is truly a great new addition. I can already see thousands of people using it in their work to work faster, more effectively to earn more and so on. I will surely continue using it, testing its features and showing you everything it can do. Thank you very much for watching guys and see you in the next one. Peace.